You can't be both a Catholic and a Christian at the same time. And we'll have a look at why you can't. As a true Christian, you will have no graven images of any kind. As any Catholic will know, images and graven images of various saints or Peter or whoever, Mary in particular, or Jesus for that matter, are full of that. Exodus chapter 20 verse 4 to 5, the second commandment says, Thou shalt have make no make unto thee any graven thou I'll start again. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I am the Lord thy God am a jealous God. And again in the New Testament in John chapter 4, when Jesus was talking to the woman of the well, he said, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to serve, to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. As a true Christian, you will not revere or pray to Mary. Jesus' ma, mother Mary was a sinner and needed saving and is a sister sleeping in the Lord, awaiting the second coming of her son like any other Christian who has died. Luke, in Luke chapter Luke, we see where Mary talked about her relationship with Jesus and Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit doth re has rejoiced in God my Saviour. In Matthew chapter 12, we know for a fact that she had other children, and that comes out very vividly in Matthew chapter 12. It says, Then one said unto him, Behold thy mother and thy brethren, stand without desire to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brethren? He stretched forth his hand towards his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren. For whosoever will do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and mother. So he gather his sisters for there as well. Then again, later on in, the, in Acts chapter 1, verse 14, we was talking about the day of Pentecost, or just before it. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brethren, which again is mostly included his sisters. In chapter 2 and verse 4, it says, And they were all, and I make the point here, Mary being one of them, were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And then later we look back to the Old Testament where they used to worship the mother and the child, which is what they've made Mary into being, from pagan worship. In Jeremiah chapter 44, the rebellious people said to Jeremiah, Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, and a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt, in Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. And I think the Catholic Church falls into that. We are not going to listen to this. And we will certainly do whatsoever thing go forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done we and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. As a true Christian, you will not call any man Pope or Papa or Father. Matthew chapter 23, verse 8 to 10. But be not ye called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. And in 3 John, we read about a guy who 
wanted to be like a pope, well, he acted like one. And he, I wrote, a, the Apostle John said, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loved to have the preeminence, which means desires to be first, among them receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which he doeth against us with mal malicious words, and and not content therewith, uh, hath, uh, doth, he doth himself receive. I'm going to start this whole verse again. Wherefore I come, I will not. Re I will remember his deeds, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and cast them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. As a true Christian, you will celebrate the communion service frequently and take the bread in remembrance of the broken body of Christ and drink the cup in remembrance of the shed blood of Christ. You will not believe in transubstantiation. The Catholic belief that the bread changes into the actual body of Jesus or that the cup changes into the actual blood of Christ. We don't believe in that. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, we have a, a list of what we should do with the communion. In verse um, 23, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you show or proclaim the Lord's death till he come. So as a true Christian, you will not, you will, and start again, as a true Christian, you will believe a saint is just another saved brother or sister not some special or some one to whom the Catholic Church has said is declares the same. When dead, like Mary, dead saints are sleeping and waiting the return of Jesus. Well, they're not there for us to pray to. And then I'm reading from the Old Testament here, Psalm 37 and verse 28. For the Lord loveth judgment and he forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. And again in the New Testament in Acts chapter 9, where Peter was just visiting some of the brethren, came to pass as Peter passed throughout all the quarters, he came down to the, also the saints which dwelt at Lydia. Uh, saints are just ordinary, everyday people in the Lord. As a true Christian once saved, if previously a Roman Catholic, you will leave the Catholic Church and your fellowship will be other saved Christians. Very vivid description of the Catholic Church in Revelation chapter 17. I'm starting reading in verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made with the, drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet-coloured beast, full of names of blasphemies. I could elaborate here, but I'll just say, when you really go into this, this is a perfect description of the Catholic system. In chapter 18, verse 4, it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partaker of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. God is not in favour of, of the Catholic system. Catholic people, no worries. Many of us were Catholics or, or some other Orthodox church. No, it's, it's talking about the religion. He's against the religion. As a true Christian, you will regard, you'll regard every day the same. Easter, Christmas, the cycles of the moon, holy days, etc. will not change their importance. 
Colossians chapter 2 says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. As a true Christian, your oversight will just be ordinary and dress ordinary. No special garments, no holy orders, no religious or clerical robes. Matthew 23 says, talk about the equivalent leaders back then, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but all their works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries, they enlarge the border of their garments, and they love the uttermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats. In verse 25 of the same chapter, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may also be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are likened unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. Even so, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. And many Catholic priests and bishops and popes and cardinals also fit this, this description perfectly. As a true Christian, your oversight will not take vows and live in isolated regions. They will be permitted and encouraged to be married. In 1 Timothy it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared, with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Yes, there are certain days you eat certain different meats or you don't eat meat in the Catholic system. As a true Christian, you will respect and condemn the practice of infant christening, which is supposed to be instead of full of adult full immersion baptism you'll make sure you personally will have been baptized by a spirit-filled servant of christ not connected to the catholic church in matthew chapter 3 describing the the baptism of jesus and jesus when he was baptized went up straightway out of the water and lo the heavens were open unto him and he saw the spirit of god descending like a dove and lighting upon him and a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The Greek word baptism means to literally plunge under water. Mark 16, 16 says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And in chapter 8 of Acts, the baptism of the, uh, the eunuch, he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him, he immersed him. As a true Christian, you will confess your sins to no man, but directly to God in the name of Jesus, his son, to obtain forgiveness. In 1 John chapter 1, it says, If you will confess, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As a true Christian, you will condemn the statement that Mary was ever virgin. She had at least seven children, five male, including Jesus, at least two female, one child by the Holy Spirit, and at least six by her husband, Joseph. Catholic doctrine needed them to change the scripture in chapter uh, in, in the Bible where it says, till to when, very dangerous practice in the light of Revelation 22, where it says, don't change anything. I think I'll leave the points I'm making there today. If you've enjoyed this, please subscribe and click.